Welcome everyone to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter and joining me as always is Tim. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> this is a special episode. We normally watch a movie and talk about it. A horror movie, obviously. It's a horror movie podcast. But this mm -hmm. is our our special uh, returning tradition. I say returning. Top 10. T shut up. <laughs> top 10. It's a top 10. We're doing the top 10 horror movies mm -hmm. of 2022. Um, now that we've had, a, we're actually recording this in fairly early January, but we want you to make sure all the movies that we so, reviewed in advance of doing this top ten go out as episodes first before you get this. Wait, I'm I'm confused because you said this was a tradition. So when was the last time that we did a top ten of 2022? <laughs> <sighs> we did top tens of the year. Tim is the oh, tradition. Okay, not now specifically. That you it, I understand what you're saying now. They're not doing 2022. But it's been a couple of years for, for a, a couple of years. A few reasons. Because a few reasons. <laughs> why do you keep repeating what I'm saying, you dick? Stop it. <laughs> because obviously the pandemic meant there wasn't as many movies coming out for twenty twenty and twenty twenty one. And quite frankly, I couldn't even make regular like a top ten <laughs> movies for those years. Never made a top ten horror movies. There just wasn't Lord enough good tried. ones. <laughs> oh, I tried. You know I tried. <laughs> right? So there was that. There was also the fact that, uh, you know, Tim is away for a lot of 2021? 20, Maybe. <laughs> was it 2020 or 2021 you were away for? Um, What happened? When was, your son, when was your son born? <laughs> why was he born? <laughs> when was he born? I, I don't know if we want to get into the why. <laughs> I know uh, the why. <laughs> yeah, he was a, uh, you know, 20... 21 okay. uh baby <laughs> uh, okay right so you know that along with uh there not been enough movies meant yeah it's been a couple of years uh, the last time we did a top 10 was for 2019 so this is a return to form wow and what a return it is because 2022 was a very good year for movies and it was specifically a very good year for horror movies not only was there a mm -hmm. high level of quality as we'll find out as we go through this top 10 in a minute it was a very varied year as well. There was very different types of horror yeah. films. There were some surprising horror films. There was a lot of good stuff to talk about. Um, if you want to see how we made this list, we actually recorded that as we do do when we do these like uh, countdowns mm -hmm. uh, over in Patreon or if you're a YouTube member, the uh, the even more tier. You can watch the deliberations video for the honorable mentions for the top five worst horror movies of the year. We did that on there as well. But more importantly, you can see how we agreed because we. This is not a. We're not each given our own top tens. We sat and we debated to create these streams after midnight top ten horror movies mm -hmm. of twenty twenty two. So that's a good fifty minute long video of us making the list over here. But this is the results. This is us presenting the list, and we're going this to get into giving, it. Officially giving birth to the list. Yes. So, we'll 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 dive in. Mm -hmm. uh tim will alternate between who it reveals so actually you don't have the list in front of you do you <laughs> no good. yeah i was gonna say good luck uh, you, 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 you weren't, remembering it you, you weren't uh noting these down because tim's not very professional you see <laughs> <laughs> i remember number 10 and number one uh, well how about i just read the the entries and you can jump in <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Without further ado, our top 10 horror movies. The Screams After Midnight top 10 horror movies of 2022. Number 10 is Halloween Ends. Oh, 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 oh. wow. Who who could have guessed it? The I certainly uh, couldn't have guessed it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, geez. Uh you know, after the the first entry in the David Gordon Green Halloween uh, trilogy, I definitely weren't feeling that hot. And then Kills really, it, I mean, it literally killed like any momentum or like, you know, uh, drive that we had like to see this trilogy finished out. So it is kind of shocking that Halloween Ends was like not a perfect movie by any means, but we surprisingly had some positive things to say about I mean, it. I, I, I think that was... <laughs> I would say it's far from perfect. I think the, you know, to get the negative out of the way, the last 10, 15 minutes kind of, you yeah. know, it, it chickens out of what it's doing. But it's a very interesting film. It's taking big mm -hmm. swings. I actually found myself kind of liking a lot of what it was doing before that point. And, you know, I, I like a quirky number 10. I like 
putting something <laughs> on there that's a little bit different for us at least a little bit weirder um and there was a couple of choices we had for what, what could make that quirky slot and mm. halloween ends is a very flawed film and i'm not going to like mm. praise it too too highly for some of the you know the reasons that i've mentioned but damn if it's not trying something different and of course because it's trying something different it's the one that most of the general audience hated and yeah. didn't like that it wasn't just the same old thing again uh at least until the last 15 minutes which you know the aforementioned disappointing ending that it uh, chickens out but uh you know it, leaves, it, it was there was different it, yeah it, it leaves you thinking about it like i would say even though there's you know th- there's a good amount of movies that i like more than that this year this was probably one of the ones that i thought about the most that like i wanted to hear people's reactions about you know the most that you know i got excited listening to podcasts or you know seeing people talk about it or you know talking to friends about it or even yeah going to see it in the theater with you like you know that was that was like a really fun uh experience which uh yeah you know a very flawed movie and you can listen to our you know whole review of it to you know get the you know, real intimate details uh, about what we thought, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I got applauded for doing something different and for standing out and, you know, for making me think, uh, you know, instead of just leaving the theater with it, like just the, hatred. And <laughs> the trilogy is such a weird ride because the, the 2018 mm-hmm. one was like such a disappointing movie after hoping it was going to be this return of like proper Halloween. And then mm-hmm. Halloween kills, I, I, I don't suppose you remember the runtime of our review for that, Tim, but it was two hours and 40 minutes of <laughs> us eviscerating it, like, from start to finish. Yeah. Like, we had just so much to talk about, and it was all bad. There was, like, no good qualities. And then the third one ends up being this interesting... It's, it's a failure, but it's, like, a really interesting, like, like failure that's that tried something hard, that tried to do something yeah. that I genuinely respect. And... I, I don't think I can think of a trilogy that has bounced around my emotions and how I felt about each entry as much as this modern Halloween trilogy ha- has. And mm-hmm. I said I didn't expect to feel anything positive going into the third one because I didn't like either of the first two all that much. But yeah. dare I... I mean, don't know. I kind of like watching Kills as a as a bad movie, but... Sure. <laughs> but ends, like... No, there's actually things in it I respect that it's trying to do something fresh with the halloween mythos that does feel mm-hmm. like it fits and belongs but is is a different idea it's not just you know Mike cooking after laurie for the eighth time or whatever it is we're <laughs> on but it feels like at this point um so yeah yeah it, it'd be interesting to see kind of like a super cut of like some of our reactions from like all three reviews because <laughs> i imagine the first one were just kind of very like lackadaisical like Oh man, like I think I was you know, depressed. We've been so long, like <laughs> like ah, uh, this is what they came up with. Uh, it's not that great. And then, yeah, I just got to the second one where we're like just you know pulling our hair out. Like, what is this? Like, what the hell were they thinking? Like, wh- wh- who okayed this? Who thought this was a good idea? <laughs> and then like to this third review where we're like, huh, interesting. Okay, okay, I see where they're going. Like, uh. yeah, very 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 strange trilogy, but cer- certainly been a- an interesting trio of films to talk about over the last yeah. you know five years so you know congratulations on that uh so there you go number nine orphan first kill Ooh. <laughs> we could have seen this coming <laughs> uh, that, honestly the fact that i ended up enjoying the original orphan which i'd never seen until a few weeks before this one came out was surprising mm-hmm. enough on its own orphan first kill may even be better because it somehow <laughs> d- like has a, a twist which we're obviously we're not going to spoil anything here but it has a twist after the first movie so well known for having a twist that i knew before mm. before i watched it the second one somehow does another twist that is genuinely surprising <laughs> and completely changes the the mm. way the movie works because you know, i think the first half is is decent and it's kind of weird that you know this now fully grown woman's playing the same like character from the first movie that was you know over a decade ago but then yeah. this twist happens and it stops being just a copy of what the first movie was and completely opens it up and it's like okay no we're flipping everything on its head we're doing something very different here and it feels fresh i i the last thing i was expecting from orphan first kill from the director of the boy of all things was a fresh <laughs> film that actually felt like it did something with the premise gobsmacked yeah, i think him. that was yeah, I, I think that was this might be one of my most shocking reviews of the year because i was 
you know, I, I, I was getting some boxing ring, uh, boxing gloves out. Cause I was, <laughs> you know, I, I thought this was going to be a, a match uh, between us, but then mm-hmm. yeah, to, to find out that we were both, uh, you know, pretty positive on it. That was, <laughs> that was a shock. Uh, yeah. I mean, this movie to me is just like dumb fun. Like, you know, there's a lot of movies that, you know, we talk about that, like, you know, especially like on this list, they'll have like, you know, deeper themes and meanings and stuff that it's trying to say. Um, this movie doesn't do any of that. It's just like kind of like cuckoo, like crazy, dumb fun. Like, uh, but it's the kind of thing where it's like, yeah, shut your brain off and then and, and just uh, enjoy it. And I feel um, like it knows what it is, though. I don't think it's like, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. not trying to be like you know, some artsy uh, avant-garde thing, um, which is kind of funny because... I love like, for the... any movie to you that tries to say something is automatically <laughs> avant-garde. It's like, oh my God. Uh, <laughs> and then, you know, it's kind of funny because of the first Orphan, like, again, I, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't say it's like, you know, this this huge, like, hoity-toity, you know, artsy movie or whatever. Better it, than it, it has does... any right to be. <laughs> yeah, but it does kind of take itself, like, kind of seriously. Like, it's mm. not... Like I, I guess there are, there are parts you can say like it plays up the schlock, but there's also parts where I you know it, it's some kind of kind of a long movie and it's dealing with like yeah you know some serious stuff like you know alcoholism and and it was dealing def- with grief and stuff. Yeah, it definitely made me laugh a bit, and I feel like they leaned into that a little bit more with the the second. I mean, it's yeah. definitely William Brent Bell's best movie. I'll just I'll, I'll put that out there right now. <laughs> uh, there's one I might like a little bit better, but uh, I'll, I'll let the viewers <laughs> decide which one that is, but. Um, uh, th- this movie does have uh one of my favorite laugh lines of the year too, which unfortunately I can't really say without spoiling. But uh, yeah. Um, if anyone wants to know, uh, I guess <laughs> you can D- DM me and I'll tell you if you don't mind spoilers. But I'll go back and watch the re- listen to the review. Yeah, do that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you mentioned it in the yeah in the episode. Uh, so yeah, orphan first kill, genuine surprise. So mm-hmm. congratulations. Um, number eight, the innocents. So, this is uh, a foreign film. This is a film that is based around children. Uh, I just realized we didn't really give a premise to like the last two. Like, I just, I, I guess we just assumed everyone knew what they were. Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, Innocence is um, it's basically a horror movie that revolves around kids. But it's like a really interesting take on it where. There's a kid who has a superpower, effectively, and he very quickly like seems to be dangerous like he's unhinged and he has the mind of a child right so he 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 uses it in ways that begin to be scary to our our lead character who's the little girl in the film and it really sort of sells this idea of like the fear you have as a child when you're in the playground or you're out with like other kids and it feels like there's problems that you can't rely on the adults to help you with and that's kind of the fear that the movie tries to get across except the stakes are actually life and death and it's actually really big and it's really inventive. I think, I think the conclusion to this film, you know, I think both of the previous entries had weaker, the, the endings were some of the weaker parts of the movie. Orphan First Kill sure. d- didn't, you know, didn't like ruin anything. It didn't like, you know, chicken out of what it was doing. It was just kind of a blander part of the movie versus the rest of it, which yeah. was wild mm-hmm. and funny and all the rest of it. Uh, mm-hmm. The Innocence has a, a truly inventive and very memorable conclusion, which mm-hmm. does something really fascinating that almost feels like something out of a completely different genre, but it never forgets that it's a horror movie because it is mm-hmm. genuinely quite tense and you feel like the, the children that are sort of in the film are trapped by this one kid who, who can just do anything he wants. Uh, you know, maybe a little bit of a... It's not as like in your face, it's more slow and it sort of like like reveals it gradually but i guess you could say you could compare it to that classic twilight zone episode where the, the kid has the powers and all the adults are scared of him oh sure you know maybe a little bit of influence from that in this uh but de- definitely uh worth checking out uh technically it came out in 2021 uh and it's native country but it wasn't really available anywhere else until 2022 and everyone else is yeah. putting it on its list uh so we, we <laughs> felt it was it was eligible yeah i mean uh, you know very uh you know, very bleak movie, which, you know, I, you know, uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know it, it's always hard, like, yeah, when you're dealing with, like, you know, uh, children in danger. But uh, like you said, it does a really good job of, you know, kind of heightening that and showing you why it's like, you know, not just something that they can go complain to their parents about or whatever. And like, it all kind of takes place around this, like, you know, apartment building complex. And it really does feel like, yeah, like a prison or something like that, like they're trapped there. And, um, yeah, it, it figures out like really inventive 
you know things to do because it's like you know the superpowers aren't big flashy things like no not you know, where they're calling down lightning or, or something but um you know that it, it's very minimalist but you know in a way that's very uh engrossing uh like you said like the ending like you know the it's not like using special effects or anything but it's still very like riveting like what they do <laughs> yeah it's, it's a very very unique um this, this is probably the most um like i wouldn't necessarily intense movie but it's definitely the, the the most like uh serious movie on this list like it's definitely the one that like there's not really much humor in it it's very like it feels like the weight of the world the whole time in a good way like you know it feels it really feels like like it, 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 you, know, you feel like the kid would feel in the situation so it feels like it's the end of the world it feels like you're doomed and uh you know there's not not a lot of whereas you know orphan first kill is quite funny even <laughs> halloween yeah. ends has some perhaps unintentional <laughs>, laughs at some points um yeah. the innocence is very uh relenting unrelenting as, as a movie you know it feels mm-hmm. quite intense uh in that very There's specific a common, way. <laughs> a common theme in these uh these first three entries of uh, children being in danger <laughs> <laughs> in, in very different ways though yeah. I, I should say <laughs> very different ways um and and or, or first kill technically i'd say no <laughs> uh, not everyone knows <laughs> what's up with esther <laughs> <laughs> technically that's it all but yeah uh all right <laughs> number seven the sadness similar to the innocence mm-hmm. uh technically released in its original country uh in late 2021 but didn't really become available to everywhere else until 2022 mm-hmm. uh but this was just too much fun to ignore this was yeah. very intense very gory very violent very visceral it's uh, about <laughs> uh, a virus that spreads kind of like a zombie virus but instead of uh, becoming zombies it's more like people just go nuts and want to hurt everyone you know they just want to kill and in like the most extreme depraved like ways imaginable yes <laughs> yes it's, it's like the sickness is just like you become unhinged like a psychopath mm. and it's 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 not got the most i mean there's some good character stuff in there but it, this is more about the premise and just how it handles it where there's a sequence about <laughs> things first kick off like 10 15 minutes in after some setup but once we get to like a subway train, uh, the movie is basically just this like depraved roller coaster ride until the end, where there's like scenes with a character stalking other people, there's people killing each other, uh, there's blood, there's you know, there's all these sorts of things. It's, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's not the goriest movie from 2022. <laughs> More on that later. But for a while it was, and it's mm. like I can understand why it's maybe a little too depraved for some people because. I would, sure, yeah. I would say unlike some other gory films that we may bring up later there's not really a sense of fun to this one it, it's more <laughs> I wouldn't say it's it, it feels as heavy as The Innocence does because mm-hmm. if I think just inherently because the gore's kind of over the top at points right, yeah, it just yeah. has it inherently has a little bit of like a, a wink wink to it but yeah. it does feel quite intense and there's definitely threats of like a sexual nature at one point so it definitely hits in like darker material in that sense and um you know like, i would definitely say between this and some other things where if you're squeamish about horror and intense horror i would say that this one crosses a line where there's there's, there's not like a line of like i think <laughs> if you're a sick bastard like us <laughs> you yeah. i think you could just have fun with this because it is mostly a fun movie i would say despite the fact mm-hmm. that i'm saying that it's very intense and doesn't have like too much actual levity but to me, some of the gore itself is the levy because it's just yeah. so like over the top and wacky. For sure, yeah. Like the, I mean, I, th- I think that's the thing with gore is like, you know, there's like to me, there's like you know the, the kind of gore that's like so bombastic and over the top that it like it doesn't affect me that like you know it doesn't feel like oh this is coming out of a real person <laughs> or whatever like it's so divorced from reality. Uh, versus like yeah that like sometimes there's like realistic gore that just like you know that's that's what like makes me wince more when like and sometimes like you know that'll be like a lot like you know a lot less bloody or or something but Mm. you know it's something more realistic that you can imagine but um yeah like this is doing a lot of stuff that is you know very crazy and like over the top uh which it kind of helps you 
you know disassociate from like you know uh how bad this stuff is uh but yeah and this one has just such a great uh creepy performance from like kind of the main bad guy in it like you know like there's lots of you know uh like bad people that you have to watch out for in the movie but there's like one in particular that's kind of following um you know like the heroes yeah, uh, of it, the story and, it becomes yeah, yeah the main villain and i think th those stalking sequences are really like the standout moments yeah. uh other than the, just the chaos stuff but yeah it's uh so now really, really fun uh and you're definitely over a line as far as violence goes but like if that sounds appealing to you then you're you will be into it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's basically what i'll say so that's number seven number six pearl 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 yeah so this is uh the Ty the second ty west film to come out in 2022 a prequel to <laughs> to x um starring mia goth as the younger version of the older lady that's in x and it's her uh in her you know late teens early 20s something around there as she is hoping to uh do well at a dance audition so she can leave this small town that she's in and go be a star <coughs> that's what she wants to be she wants to be a star um and this is very different to x this is more about someone who is clearly a bit unhinged and is over the course of the film going to become more unhinged and eventually snap so it's a, it's a little bit uh not not a carry it's, like, it's, it's more but we'll it's like, compare it to yeah but there you go well <laughs> I, yeah i mean i would just say like it's more of a character study yeah you know versus like you know x which is this kind of like you know more of this kind of grindhouse like um slasher big. type yeah yeah i, I think <laughs> With this, though, you've got, like, this great performance from Mia Goth to, yeah. you know, steals... I mean, it's her movie anyway, but she kind of steals it in the sense that there's moments where she just acts with such conviction where she's, like, snapping at someone or she's yelling at someone. And then the real standout, of course, is, like, there's, like, a big monologue towards the end where she just talks straight for, like, eight minutes mm -hmm. uh, in a single shot, and it's really well done. And you really buy her as this character. You buy... Mm -hmm like the her surroundings and like that she's different from other people she's got that kind of like you know serial killer in the making kind of you know feel to her um that's what the movie is and it's that build and like the the hopes that she you know the, the little signs that she's weird and that she's different but the hopes that she's mm -hmm. going to do something with her life and she wants all these things and um yeah and also it does a really good job of trying to evoke kind of a classical movie style because it's set in the uh what the early 20s or no, it's the yeah. end of world war one so it's like 1918 i think 18 yeah. yeah uh so it really tries to look colorful like it's technicolor almost mm -hmm. it tries to give it this feel of this classic kind of hollywood time um <clears throat> so which it, again it, is just like or you know it's just like something different like you know you don't really um see a lot of uh you know horror movies uh set around this time like you know yeah. like you definitely you get older like period piece stuff but i feel like it's always more like kind of gothic like yeah, you know, gothic. Old, days and, yeah. Stuff. Um, and yeah, again, I don't feel like there's anything else on this top 10 that is like Pearl. Pearl is very unique and yeah. very distinct <laughs> amongst this list as being this character piece of this slow descent into like madness. Like, you know. yeah. Like, uh, I, I mean, I, I hate to be repetitive, but like, uh, you know, uh, not only was it like a year for good movies and a year for good horror movies, but it was like a good, a year for like surprising movies. Like, mm. this was like X was barely on, you know, many people's radar at, at the start of the year. Um, let alone like, you know, anyone knew that they filmed this secret movie, like the secret prequel to it. So like, yeah, it, it just like came out of nowhere. Uh, and yeah, and not only was it surprising to be like, Hey, um, we had a movie at the start of the year and now here is a surprise, like prequel to it. Like, towards the end of the year but it's also surprising well, it was, that it's just to clarify it wasn't a surprise at the end of the year in the sense that there was like a tease for it at the end of the credits of right 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 yeah. so but yeah i know what you're saying though is like it was like all of a sudden here's a second one coming yeah um but then also just that it is like such a departure from x like it is uh yeah like a, a very different uh like it's not like they were like oh yeah let's make like a a sequel or a prequel right away and you know, we'll just kind of do the same formula, but in a different time period or something. Like, it's very different uh, from no. X, which is... And it feels like yeah. you know, this was something, like, they were at the locations where they shot X. Mm -hmm. They wanted to do something else, maybe because the pandemic was slowing things down. They said, hey, do you want to just hang around and make another movie? 
and I was surprised <laughs> that there was kind of like as much production value to make it feel like the time period because mm-hmm. it, you know, if it was it was made on relatively such a whim, it's like, well, r- really, like this is <laughs> just knocked this out. But it feels like a little passion project between Mia Goth, who helped write the movie, and Ty mm-hmm. West, who's the other writer and director. It just it feels like this neat little film that was born out of just like, hey, let's do something and. It's, it's pretty good. It's, it's very good, yeah. even. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Pearl's a, is a very interesting time uh, with a really great central performance that, that really puts it over, over the line. So, mm-hmm. there you go. Uh, that's number six. Number five is Deadstream. Ooh. Speaking yeah. about movies that just came out of nowhere, and, you know, <laughs> Shudder has so many, like, exclusives and originals that come out, and... If you have Shudder and you want to keep up with them, you'll you maybe watch someone. And I've done it in the past where for a couple of months I've watched every new movie they've put out. And for the mm-hmm. most part, they'll just be kind of okay. Some of them will be quite bad. But this yeah. was an example of one that came out and was getting some buzz. And sure enough, you watch it. It's this found footage story of this, this internet YouTuber guy who does dares and pranks and things like that. And he's doing a, a night where he spends a night in a haunted like house, effectively. And all of it's him. It's, it's, there is technically another character occasionally, but it's pretty much this one-man show where the guy on the screen who's performing this movie and technically filming most of it because it's like a like POV, you know, found footage movie, he's also the co-director and co-writer of the film. Yeah. So it's very much him. And it's him. I think it's him and his... Was it his wife who's the other director? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's... But this is a horror comedy. That's, that's the thing that you have to yeah. get across here is... What makes this work? It gets kind of Evil Daddy and its premise and what it does as the movie goes on. But what makes it so good is just how funny this guy is and just how much it gets what the, the subject that it's making fun of. Like, all the little comments about being a YouTuber mm. and all the little, like, things that he's doing for, for ad revenue or to get clicks. All of it feels like this is a movie, probably the best movie I've seen that is about our current, like, generation like or, you know it's taking something <laughs> of our modern world that's very specific to the last like you know five ten years and making a movie that uses it for comedy material and does it in a way that doesn't just feel cringy it doesn't feel like oh they're making a reference to a, a hip thing that's on this feels like no we've had a good 10 years or so of people making money on youtube and like influencers mm-hmm. and shit like that and this guy mm-hmm. is nailing how to be the perfect douchebag but likable and like in a funny way like he's like he's obviously not a great person the character yeah. but he's very funny constantly about it being a, a shithead and it, i was laughing constantly through this and, and they do a really good job of like uh kind of like laying some breadcrumbs as to like you know like what he might have possibly done because it starts off with him being like deplatformed and uh, he got cancelled like, yeah yeah so like this is kind of his big comeback thing and then like as you slowly like find out why uh and yeah i, I gotta give kudos because it was something where when i started the movie i thought this guy was so annoying i i was not ready to you know like fall in love with him by the end of the movie but like uh yeah he he knows what he's doing he does just such a good job that like he is so charming as this really annoying <laughs> YouTube guy that like like right because uh, the, the movie starts with like a show reel of some of these different videos and they're all funny yeah. like all of them pretty much made me laugh yeah <laughs> not not because I would think those were funny in like a real YouTube video but as mm. a as a representation of this type of asshole doing videos like this I was mm. laughing at all these little stunts that he was doing uh, yeah. and the movie has an arc you know where he you know learns some lessons and stuff yeah. <laughs> so yeah. And there's another one where, uh, yeah, where it did end up, like, surprising me. Uh, yeah, because, like you were saying, like, th- there's a there's a point where it kind of starts getting... Like, when it kind of starts off, it feels, like, more like a typical haunted house where it's, like, things are creaking, doors are maybe opening or closing, maybe you see a quick shadow or something like that. Uh, so as I was watching, I was like, all right, this is fine, but it's not anything... I haven't seen before but then there is kind of a turn where things just get like cranked up like right to 10 like you know and that's when you know it starts going like kind of full-on evil dead and yeah if people listen to the show they know that you know that's evil dead's like you know my one of my favorite things in the world so like uh and it doesn't feel like rip-off-y or anything it feels like 
Yeah, like this is like yeah. a, a modern kind of take on it. Uh, when, which... when people think Tim, they think Evil Dead and Keeping Up with the Kardashians. That's, that's, that's two big things. Yeah, that's two, <laughs> two very similar uh, things. Um... <laughs> uh, no, I'm imagining uh, whatever the Kardashian is who has who has the big butt. She has to like cut it off because it gets infected <laughs> by you know, deadite. Um, anyway, uh, but no, I mean it's it's just super fun. Like this is probably like uh, Orphan First Kill was pretty fun, but this is uh, well, I I, I, I well. There's a lot of fun movies on the list, but uh, it's just a blast. If you haven't seen it, it's on Shutter, and uh, yeah, definitely highly recommended. Very, very surprising. I think this is just like one yeah. that, much like some of these, like I hadn't heard of it. Didn't feel like anyone had heard of it until all of a sudden it existed, and it was like, oh, you got to watch this. Uh, and it's in the, it's another one of those ones too, where like you watch it and you're instantly like, all right, yeah, let me know anytime this guy has a, a new movie, like. Um, because he, he also had a segment in the in the in the new VHS uh, movie, which I liked a lot. Uh, so it's yeah. like uh, well, yeah, don't, don't, don't sell his uh, co-director short. Like it was him and his wife that did both. I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah she's a, it, It's easier to think of him because he's like the he's on, dude screen, on the yeah. screen. He's on know? screen the whole time. Uh, but no, yeah, I mean that team. Anytime they have a, a new movie out, um, yeah, I'm so down to check it out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's number five. Number four, X. <laughs> gonna give it to you <laughs> yeah so obviously not surprising we already had peril uh mm. and we had to mention x when we talked about peril because it's a connected to it but x yeah we both agreed was a, a little better uh we like mm. both a lot but x is this throwback to 70s very specific i mean let's be honest it's very specifically texas chainsaw massacre and yeah one of the things that stuck out is like the shooting style of it is trying to evoke movies of that era. It starts off in this really slow shot. And it, one of the things I liked about Peril, actually, is that it also felt like it was trying to evoke a different time period, but it wasn't doing the same one as X. It felt, it felt like they yeah. were both shot differently to fit the, the tones that they were going for in each movie. Uh, but X, you know, it's the gritty, it's this group of characters who are are not being honest about it to the owners of the of this farmhouse, but they're renting out a, a, a sort of guest house on a farm mm. to make a porno in the 70s. <laughs> And we've got this wacky set of characters um, who are relatively all quite likable in different ways. Um, and it explores some different mm-hmm. themes. It enforces, you know, f- freedom, sexual expression, uh, you know, misogyny, things like that. And, of course, uh, takes some interesting turns along the way. But ultimately is a 70s style kind of slasher movie where people are killed off. Um, and there's some really fun uh, segments and kills and... Yeah, I don't really want to spoil any of it, but that's the, the gist of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love this movie. And uh, yeah, it's kind of funny because the if you tell me that premise, like I automatically am like a little turned off just because I feel like, you know, anytime you have something like very explicit with sex, I feel like, all right, it's either going to be like super cheesy, like, you know, they're going to be making ton, tons of dumb porno jokes all the time, or it's going to be like, you know, feel very... Um, like exploitative and just have like a bunch of like nude scenes for no reason or whatever. But uh, I, I thought it was actually like really well done. And, you know, like you said, like the cast is, uh, I, I think part of the charm here, like everyone, uh, you know, like obviously like, you know, Mia Goth and stuff, get, you know, gets called out cause she does a you know great performance and everything, but like really it's an ensemble cast. And yeah, everyone, and I, Jenny I really Ortega, like... what a year she had. I mean, yeah. she, <laughs> Scream 5, uh, X, Wednesday, you know, she, she was just like all of a sudden like this new Scream Queen that just kind of, not, not that Wednesday's a horror, but it's, you know, it's, it's horror adjacent, adjacent yeah. and it has like, you know, the tone and stuff of the Adams Family, but. <clears throat> yeah, um, and the, um, yeah, and this one is actually like kind of a slow burn. Like it does take a while for oh, yeah, you know, like, you, the horror to kick in, but. Uh, which, you know, if you do it well, if you, if you actually have characters that are compelling, that works because it's the whole point is you care about all the characters before they start dying off, as opposed to just, oh, they're just fodder for the knife. They're just fodder for the yeah. the pitchfork, maybe, in this case. Um, so, and, yeah, that makes sense. And I'll say, like, yeah, and, and this is, like, the Ty West that, like, I've been waiting, you know, to make a comeback for, like, because uh, I, I love, love, love House of the Devil so much. Like, it's one of those ones where like i really liked it when it came out like i loved it when it came out but it's like i just feel like every year you know it's like a yearly you know halloween rewatch for me that uh you know just always creeps up on my list uh like there's something about the movie i just love the like aesthetic and you know the look and the characters of it so much that 
as I, I hate to say it, but like, yeah, I feel like all of his movies after that have been kind of disappointing. Like, not like they've been horrible. Like, you know, there've been ones that I've enjoyed, but you know, just I haven't. There's hasn't been one that like I loved like unabashedly. Mm. So, uh, I, I love that he gave you two this year. Two, yeah. <laughs> like it's like oh, okay, like yeah. Uh, all right. So this wasn't like a fluke, like one time director that. I just really liked one of their movies. It's like, oh, wait, no, he does have chops. And um, yeah, I just hope we kind of keep going from there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Hard to fault. This was uh, one of one of the early favorites of the year because it was back in like, April or whatever when it came yeah. out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's number four. That's X. Number three, Barbarian. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just a- another, like, huge like surprise out of nowhere um yeah this this is one i i feel like i i hadn't heard anything about it until like you know like maybe like a, a couple of weeks or something before it came out and then the only thing you would hear about it is uh don't hear anything about this like just go in blind oh yeah yeah i heard that a lot yeah <laughs> going cold that was that was the the, the constant recommendation yeah uh, and as it as it a movie that you should go in cold because it kind of it does that thing where you're not really sure what it's about at first and it's like okay it's a bit tense it's about a woman who goes to an airbnb and there's someone already there and that's all i'm going to say because anything else i think is a spoiler so yeah. <laughs> but it's like okay so like so you're sort of looking for what the threat is you know because it's a horror movie there's a threat what's what's the antagonist what's the you know, is it this guy that's already here? Is there something else? Is there an external force? And it just keeps building things. It's got a surprising structure. Mm-hmm. Um, it does have... It's a relatively intense in the way it handles its horror and suspense, mm-hmm. but it does have moments of levity. Like, I had a couple of big laughs in this movie as well, Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. especially in the middle section, because it kind of splits up neatly into like three sections. Um, and the middle section especially had a lot of laughs in it. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So, like, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a nice, fun fun ride um and it and it feels like such a like it feels so confident in its uh filmmaking like you know uh this director who you know i i'd previously only known for like doing like sketch comedy and stuff which i liked but like you know he he's someone i haven't thought about in a while so to just kind of come come out of nowhere with like one of the best horror movies of the year uh it was you know such a wild swing but like yeah it like everything in the movie feels so like well handled and deliberate it just feels like yeah we're seeing the start of you know what i hope is like a very confident filmmaker and career that mm-hmm. I, I know he teased before that he's writing another horror movie they said is even more messed up <laughs> than this one so i'm uh you know pretty excited to see what else we're gonna get from him but yeah just uh tons of fun and also and this uh, was one i actually went to uh, i'll just finish up this yeah. uh, i saw this in theaters and it was a really great <laughs> theater experience just to you know, because it wasn't like super packed, but there's like, you know, a decent number of people in there. Uh, so just to, you know, like uh, hear like people constantly being like, you know, gasping or being like, what the, like, no, don't go in there. Like is, uh, and it was, was another was one time. as well with uh, a su- such kind of surprisingly good ensemble cast. Like, you know, yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. not really a weak link amongst them. They all fit the rules very well. Um, uh, so yeah, like really solid stuff. Um, it, it kind of lived up to the hype. Not everyone agreed with that. Oh, some people thought it was overhyped, but like I, I thought it lived up to the uh, the hype that it had been placed upon it. But uh, it's number three. Number two. Nope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, it's equally sci-fi. So if mm. now that we do a top sci, because there's not enough sci-fi that comes out in a year to do a top ten sci-fi. Uh, but uh nope is uh you know we won't spoil much we'll just say that yeah there is kind of you know a ufo type thing in the clouds above Mm -hmm. this farmhouse uh which is uh like a ranch that is used there's horses that are used for movies and things like that Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is the jordan peele film uh after get out and us this is his third movie and he's getting to that point now where you can kind of market a movie just on his name he's got that kind of christopher nolan sort of thing going but maybe more specifically for horror movies and uh it's very inventive uh i don't want to compare it to something because i think it spoils what it is but when we reviewed it we compared it to another movie a lot uh Mm -hmm. but it's it's got a little bit of that obviously you know it's got commentary it's it's about a subject certainly but i would say that this is his most fun movie like 
Yeah. Of its three, this is the one that it feels like it's got the most more of an adventurous kind of tone to it at times. Uh, maybe a bit more levity in places. Not that there was none in the other films that he made, but uh, th- this, I think, l- lends itself to it a little bit uh, in places. And I just kind of like that it's like, it sets up, d- you know, the, the mystery of the antagonist. And it's, a you know, as they try to figure out if something's really there and then what to do about it. It sets up rules, and then it adheres to those rules, and I feel like the characters are making choices based on what's been set up, so it's very fulfilling in that sense. Uh, so, perhaps a spicy take, but I think this is my favourite of his, uh, of his three movies. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really can't argue with it. It's, uh, it's, it's tough because I, I truly do love, like, every, you know, thing he's done so far, or at least, like, yeah, you know, these first three movies. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe if, if some people count like, uh, you know, some of the uh, other comedy stuff he does, which uh, I actually, you know, didn't really know too much about, like uh, his sketch show and, and everything before that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, everything he does t- to me though is is such a banger. Like <laughs> they're uh, they're great. I absolutely love this. It's a, again, um, you have. Uh, really good actors uh, in really good roles where it's just as much fun, you know, hanging out with them and like, you know, mm-hmm. hearing them talk and like playing stuff, you know, as it is, uh, you know, when they're c- confronting uh, these issues, like, uh, like you said, it has like the social commentary, like it's, you know, there's you know, very obvious stuff that it's about that it's like, you know, that makes you th- well, think that. And this is actually mm-hmm. something as well, and you know, unlike some of the films on this list, particularly earlier on in the list in the lower mm-hmm. end. But I think this movie gets better as it goes. I think it's like last twenty minutes oh, yeah, yeah. is its 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 peak. Like it just it crescendos to the best part of the movie, which isn't necessarily true mm-hmm. in some of these other films. Where you know the last 10, 15 minutes, agree, of, yeah. it's the weaker part of some of them uh, that we've mentioned mm-hmm. earlier on. Uh, so I, I think that's really good. It's really well paced. Mm-hmm. It feels exactly the correct length. It feels exactly what mm-hmm. it, it should be. Um, very tight as a film. Uh, and some great visuals yeah. as well. Definitely, I think. It's, I mean, even if you don't think it's his best film, I think it's definitely his best looking film because he got a new mm-hmm. cinematographer, and there's some really great visuals in this. Uh, which I can't really spoil yeah. what they are because they're all very spoilery, but uh, very, very pretty. Yeah, and, and like you said, like it's like you know, uh, you can make an argument for it being like sci-fi as well, but um, there, there are some truly like horrific moments in here. Like again, can't really spoil anything, but. You know, there's um, certain sequences <laughs> that are just really chilling. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that is a uh, nope. Uh, which leads us to number one. Uh, the Streams After Midnight number one horror movie of 2022. And that is Terrifier 2. Oof. Which oh boy. <laughs> I fought for uh, tooth and nail <laughs> to, to get it as high as I possibly could. I, I think... <sighs> there's so many things that go into this obviously it's extremely good right it's it's mm. it's very fun art the clown's a great slasher villain and he kills with such love in his heart where he's enjoying what he's doing <laughs> the violence is ridiculous and over the top and one of the most gory things i've ever seen in my life but it's <laughs> amazingly like, got all this mythology that kind of hints at that you know we sat and had a great conversation in the review about like what was really going on and what it all means, which I was not expecting from Terrifier 2. But I think part of the reason why I think it deserves up here uh, t- to be the... It's certainly the horror film you think of first in 2022, even if it's not your favourite, is it was made for, like, no money. It was made for hundreds of thousands of dollars, not millions. It had, you know... And it looks fantastic. It, it made way more than anyone thought it would it was meant to be out for one weekend and it kept getting extra weeks added to it because people wanted it and it was based on word of mouth uh which is wild for a sequel that you know very few people saw and it's fairly easy to go see the first terrifier and i assume a lot of people did you know either before or after they went to see terrifier 2 but i think i think the first one's on like 2b yeah it's, 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 it's free and easy to access in most places so like it, it just it's this little movie that could and yeah and in a world where admittedly for horror this year was very very plentiful so i I can't really complain this year but in movies in general there is kind of like a oh the little movies like don't get as much success and it's all just just this the marvel movies it's this franchise it's the sequels and this is a sequel technically but you know it's a sequel to like another dirt cheap movie that very few people saw 
Yeah. The fact that this got the success that it did, and it got the word of mouth that it did, and it's just proof that in the modern age that, you know, social media and stuff like that can be used to, like, prop up a movie and make a movie like this a success is kind of heartwarming. And it's funny that oh, yeah. I feel heartwarmed for a movie is <laughs> depraved, is terrifier too. So, it's wonderful. I loved it. I loved the tone, I loved the music, I loved the overall aesthetic it was going for. And I love watching Art the Clown. Like, I was laughing hysterically at how violent it got at one point. Yeah, uh, the, you know, the, the first one, you know, is really good. I liked it quite a bit. And I, I rewatched it, you know, before seeing mm. the sequel. And, you know, it's still fun. But the the first one is mostly just, like, you know, the, the story about the first one is kind of just like, you know, oh, how over the top and gory it is, uh, which is very entertaining. Uh, but, like... Yeah, I, I wasn't having like long thoughts and discussions about the mythology and the lore. Like I love that you know, they for the second one they really just swung for the fences and they're trying to inject like all this stuff into it and um and I like that it's not just like you know, very easy stuff where like someone's like Hey, uh, I found this old book that, you know, tells us the history of Art the Clown. Like it's <laughs> yeah, like no, there's yeah. still a lot of questions um that are out there, but uh it gives you like enough like lore that like makes you like think and kind of try to piece things together, which is so much more fun than just kind of like you yeah, handing it to you. But uh, yeah, I love that they're trying to make it a thing and it's not just like, Oh, Hey, we're just the over the top, crazy, gory slasher. And we're just going to keep doing the same thing. It's like, Oh no, they're really uh, going for it in a way that uh, honestly, like it, it reminded me a lot of like, you know, like later sequels that you would see in like, you know, like classic, like eighties franchises and stuff that we love so much. Like, you know, like this felt like the kind of lore that you'd be getting in like, you know, the third, uh, nightmare movie or like, you know, the fifth Jason movie or, or something like, you know, uh, not those specific entries, but you know what I mean? Like just like these later er era sequels where like they start <laughs> injecting like some crazy stuff. And, um, and as you know, entertaining as art is, I love that there's, they kind of prop up like, you know, this like nemesis <laughs> for him to, mm -hmm. you know, that like to go against him. And, uh, yeah, we, you know, we we're kind of like a little baffled at the runtime, but it, you know, strangely like goes by pretty quickly yeah, for like there was very two and a half hours. Of it, there was very little of it where I felt the runtime. So, I mean, credit yeah. where credit is due. It's a, it's a slasher epic. And that's not a genre mm -hmm. that I typically think of that can be an epic. <laughs> you know, I think of a yeah. slasher as a 90 minute lean get in kill some people get out have some yeah. fun that's it i had such a smile in my face throughout most of that movie like, it's, <laughs> it's just so much of it just like filled me with glee and joy which maybe says a lot about me but um <laughs> and then yeah i mean not not to reiterate too much like about what you said but just you know aside from the movie itself i love the story of the movie that this you know like no budget like you know well, i mean obviously it had a budget but you know compared to you know, a lot of movies, especially other movies on this list and stuff, you know, that usually will have at least like a couple of million dollars or whatever. The fact that, you know, it had very little money, uh, but it still managed to look so good. And like, you could just feel like the passion behind, you know, the, the filmmaker and, um, you know, he, he clearly loves like <laughs> this character. And I love that he just wants to keep, you know, like putting it out there in the world. And the fact that, yeah, it, you know, kind of spread and, you know, it was this thing that like, you know, I think it's, yeah, it's supposed to be like in theaters in one weekend that I think it was going to drop to streaming, but it just, the demand for it just kept being there and people were kept talking about it that, you know, it ended up being in theaters like for like the whole Halloween season of October, which yeah, yeah it was yeah. awesome. Like you, I, I can't think of like the last time something like that happened. Yeah. Um, and that's a good point is like Halloween season in 2022 for pretty much all of October, you could go see, Halloween ends, Terrifier mm -hmm. two, Barbarian. I think Smile made about around then as well. Um, yeah, it came out like September thirtieth, so yeah. it was still been around October. So like, there was a lot of horror options, and I feel like there's a lot of years where that's not the case. Where you there's like oh, one yeah, yeah. bad horror movie that came out at the start of October, but for some reason a lot of horror movies come out elsewhere in the year. Which don't get me wrong, we want them all year round, so you don't want them all to just wait yeah, for yeah. October. But uh, it, it was a very good October season for having choice. But the year as a whole was just like full mm. of 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 good stuff, um, and I just happened to be in the US uh, when Terrifier <laughs> Two was out, so I went to see it in the theater, which I would not have had the chance <laughs> to do otherwise. So, uh, wild wild stuff. Um, like 
I, I love Terrifier 2 dearly. Uh, but it was a very good year for horror. Like, I, I actually, it's an embarrassment of riches this year, honestly. I feel like in past years when we've done these top tens, yeah, there'll be like a good five that we're really passionate about. And then it's like, okay, here's yeah. some of the best of the rest to like fill out the top ten. This, I felt mm-hmm. like, you know, we had other options. So I recommend checking out the bonus video if you're a patron or a YouTube member to, and see what else mm-hmm. didn't make the list. There is one that I do want to mention here. I'll, you know, the, the honorable mentions can pretty much just stay on that bonus video. But the one that I will mention, because it was kind of like a special case, is we decided not to include the menu in the top 10. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because we, we basically just thought that it, it didn't really fit on a horror top 10. Like, we, we wouldn't necessarily recommend it as a horror movie. Um, there's horror elements for sure, but it, it felt separate enough that even though we reviewed it on the show, it didn't really belong as a horror top 10. But it's very good. And it's better yeah. than some of the movies we've brought up. It's just we didn't feel like it fit. So... Uh, I wanted to give yeah. that a shout out. But anything else, you can go see what we we, we, we hated, what we didn't want to include, and uh, the other things that just missed the cut on, on the bonus video. But uh, hopefully you've enjoyed our, our top 10. But uh, very good year, <sighs> Tim. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that makes me kind of sad is it's like, there are things I'm looking forward to this year, but it's also kind of like, man, there's no way like 2023 can live up to 2022. <laughs> you know, I- like... Most of the good stuff, though, was the surprises. So, I mean, it's entirely possible yeah. that we'll get a bunch of surprises. Um, what's interesting this year is that you have another another baby, is that <laughs> we'll be reviewing Megan, or we will have already reviewed Megan by the time this goes out, mm-hmm. hopefully. Um, but anything that comes out after that, until you return later in the year, uh, we're going to be playing a lot of catch-up in the last few months of this year, uh, squeezing in all the 2023 movies that we would, <laughs> you know, want to doing the show and hopefully consider for a possible top 10 so yeah. hopefully we feel that there's a lot to do hopefully, you know the worst thing that will happen is you'll come back later in the year and we'll be like ah nah there's like two movies that you feel is worth doing yeah. Yeah, like, you know, there wasn't that much uh, yeah. <laughs> which was kind of the case last time funnily enough you know there was only a couple of notables that it felt like we need to get to when you came back yeah because yeah, I feel like for a while there was like discussion about like doing some catch up and stuff but then we, when we kind of looked at it it's like well it doesn't really seem necessary to do this movie or that movie and then you just kind of start going like okay yeah maybe unless it was huge or, or yeah. whatever like a lot of it kind of seemed like forgettable there, there wasn't that many casualties and that, that, that's maybe more just about how many like worthwhile stuff there was in 2021 but uh, yeah. 2022 very very good so <laughs> by all means let us know what your favourite horror movies of uh, the year are in the comments and all that stuff uh, and on twitter at screams midnight um it is uh, worth mentioning if you know you've got a fave that we didn't have it's possible we didn't see it it's possible that it just missed the cut or it's possible uh-huh. that we hated it <laughs> like, <laughs> those, those, all of those are possibilities it just depends what it is but i yeah i, I would say actually I, I meant to bring this up at the at the start i was gonna say if there was any like big ones that like neither of us have seen that you know, we thought might be eligible. Uh, the only one I could think of, which the trailer didn't make me super excited, but I've actually been hearing a lot of people say, uh, put it on their list or mm-hmm. give it a shout out because they really liked it. But uh, I- I've heard a lot of people really like that, Bones and all. Yeah, you uh, know what? Yeah, honestly, when you asked me the question there, that was the only thing I could think of in my head that seems like yeah. it might, you know, make the cut. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the trailer, I got the trailer actually when I saw Terrifier 2, and uh, I thought it looked, you know, it's a bit more of an artsy looking horror movie, but it looked like it, it might be worth something. Um, yeah, that's maybe the only one that I think maybe that neither of us have seen that possibly would otherwise be up for consideration. Eventually, you know, like by the time you get this top 10, I think it's going to be like end of February, start of March. So th- mm. There has to be a cutoff. There had to be a time it's like, no, we're doing the top yeah, yeah. 10 in 2022. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It can't go on forever because we'll always find more to watch if if we keep looking. Right. So, uh, so yeah, if bones and all is great. By all means, let us know in the comments. But, um, yeah. So there you go. That is the uh, the top ten. Um, yeah. So that's that's the show. Thank you very much for joining <laughs> us. Uh, you can of course uh, support us over at Patreon dot com slash TV uh, and get you know. Uh, bonus episodes things like that random bonuses well, it's not that random this is kind of a normal thing that we would do a top 10 or something but yeah. uh obviously the streams bonuses are kind of on pause for a while since tim's uh, you know away having another baby like arnold and junior uh <laughs> commiserations to your genitals uh but uh 
obviously there's bonuses for other shows there'll be more bonuses for screams when we come back there is a back catalog though there's something like i don't know i want to say like 35 to 40 bonus screams episodes uh on patreon just sitting there waiting uh there's 12 even more streams episodes at the five dollar tier uh so go go check out those yeah. and some other random bonuses here or there so uh by all means go and yeah. have a look see yeah because uh like 2022 is a great year for horror movies which means you know it's a great year for reviews so there's you know if there's anything you know anything uh people might have missed they can always go check it out and then you know check out all the even more screams episode from last year that you know not always talking about current movies, but there's a, a lot of fun stuff there. There's a lot of them there. You know, I, yeah. I try to keep up with some some of the smaller films that uh, mm. mostly didn't make the cut of the top 10, but we talked about a lot of movies like in the making of this yeah. uh, that, that we did talk about in even more streams throughout the year. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, go and, uh, go and have a look at all that stuff. Uh, you can, of course, support everything by just, you know, liking, subscribing, dinging the bell for notifications uh, and commenting and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, so thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies and we will see you next time.